Welcome to Bloomberg Equality. I'm very pleased to be joined by the Global Head of Corporate Engagement and President of Goldman Sachs' Foundation, Asai Pompe. Asai, thank you so much for joining me. Thanks for having me, Anne-Marie. Let's start with International Women's Day. You're doing so much to engage and promote women, especially part of this 10,000 small businesses. Tell me a little bit about what you're looking forward to and like the events of International Women's Day. It's really exciting what's, uh, what's happening on International Women's Day. In particular, it's really a celebration. It's a celebration of a number of the most powerful and interesting small business owners in, uh, in the UK. It's interesting because I call them our growth heroes mm -hmm. um, because these are really women who have started their business and really through our educational programs taken it to the next level. And so it's really shining a bright light on these women. It's interesting because I think they really demonstrate sort of three qualities that time and time again we see in women-led small business entrepreneurs. One is they are incredibly tenacious, Anne-Marie. Um, they will do what it takes to get their business right. started. It's interesting because one of them was telling me how she had a child, one month old, and she wanted to start her, her business. She'd been working on the business plan throughout her pregnancy. Wow. And she went to the bank to try to get a loan for her business, and she was denied that opportunity. A few, months, a few weeks later, she went in and said, look, I'm looking for a loan for my kitchen and she got a loan for her kitchen, which she then leveraged to start her small business. That's very smart. Um, that shouldn't be the case, but it does speak to the lengths that women-owned businesses, women-led businesses will go to to try to get their businesses started. Um, they're also extraordinarily, extraordinarily organized. Mm -hmm. um, they have sometimes small children, they're helping perhaps with their parents, um, they're running their households and trying to do things in the community, and they are committed to delivering and driving growth in their business. Um, the last thing I'd say is that they have perfected the art of being understated and humble. Oh, wow. Which we want to change. <laughs> um, um, they need to be a bit more sometimes self-promotional about their business and what their business imperatives are. And it's interesting because through our educational programs, we work with these women entrepreneurs, and tomorrow we're going to be highlighting a number of them and the tremendous work that they've been doing. So today they can be very proud of what they're doing. Absolutely. What about female leadership in the 10,000 Women Initiative? That's different than the small business program. Um, it's more very, very small scale, right, for these women that you're working with? Well, it's interesting because um, while they come in at a particular growth point, our, our, our objective is to grow their business as much as we possibly can. I'll give you one example. We actually had a woman who participated in our program in India. She inherited her father's plywood business. She turned that business into a business where she's installing modular furniture and has been able to grow wow. the revenue of that business after participating in the program by over 400 percent. But that's just one example of what we see women entrepreneurs uh, doing in terms of growing their business. 10,000 Women was launched in 2008. We were one of the first movers in working with in women entrepreneurs in emerging markets to provide them with uh, greater access to capital, to provide them with uh, education, and also provide them with peer-to-peer -peer, uh, mentoring as well. So they have these ideas and Goldman really just helps push them forward. Push them forward. Bring that business from, it's from wherever it is in its starting point and really try to maximize it. They have to, as part of the program, develop what's called a business growth plan. Where do you want to take this business? And it's interesting because as we uh, hear the report out from our 10,000 small businesses, they say that 90% of them pay it forward. And what do I mean by that specifically? 90% of them report mentoring at least eight other people in their community. Oh, wow. So when you help one woman and one woman-led business, the catalytic impact mm. of that is pretty significant. That's incredible. Um, I want to ask about your personal story. You are a daughter of immigrants to the United States, mm. and then you became a partner last year at Goldman Sachs, which is, I mean, the envy of all of Wall Street. Um, it makes you very unique. Uh, you tell me a bit about your, your journey. Sure. It's interesting because I came to the United States, to Brooklyn, um, from Guyana, um, with my entire family. And it's interesting because when I started at Goldman 13 years ago, it was interesting to sort of see, you know, who came before me. And I knew the name of the first women partner at Goldman Sachs, Jeanette Loeb, and I knew the name of Garland Wood, the first African-American partner at Goldman Sachs. I can't underestimate, as we think about women and leadership and advancement, seeing the examples of particular individuals who've made it before you cannot be underestimated. To see that there's a path and someone's carved it before really is a motivator in terms of thinking somehow, maybe one day it's possible for me too. Do you think that Goldman and just Wall Street and finance industry in general is becoming more diverse? 
Look, we, we certainly at the firm are making tremendous strides. And if you look at the numbers of our last partnership class, you certainly see that. Look, I think there's a lot more to be done. While I think we should you know, celebrate where we are, I think we should um, you know, put the pedal to the metal to make sure we're doing even more. And, and putting women in not just positions, but senior positions, mm -hmm. um, and really recognizing their talents in the organizations. We believe that the economic empowerment and advancement for women is an economic imperative for our society and it's a driver of growth in communities in which we work and live and we need to see more of that. And you're also so involved in the philanthropy yeah. of, at Goldman Sachs. Yeah. Um, you know, what would you say has, is like you're looking forward to working on even more so this year? It's interesting because I see sort of three trends uh, in philanthropy. One in particular is obviously we talked about sort of the focus on women and women entrepreneurs. The second thing that I see is people I in corporations, they want to see their core values really reflected mm -hmm. in the organization. Not in business principles that are posted on the right. wall, but they want to be a part of giving back to communities. Um, at the firm, we have... So it's not just about capital returns. It's not just about capital returns. They want to put their Lockean labor right. into um, helping organizations. We work with, on a yearly basis, over 700 non-for-profits around the world. And in particular, you know, 20,000 employees, you take a day off of work or a day on the weekend, whatever it may be, and you are involved in an organization. You may paint a school, you may mentor a child, um, but they want to do that more. Last year, actually, we um, expanded our analyst impact program. The program was started four years ago, um, and what that is, is we started a competition where analysts at the firm would be able to go out and source non-for-profits that they've researched, oh, wow. that are doing fantastic work, whether it's in poverty alleviation or environmental related issues, and say, look, Goldman Sachs, I think these are phenomenal organizations who could use your capital. And it's a competition in front of our, manage our partnership uh, committee and management committee. And it's incredible. We've had over 1,000 analysts participate. 72% of our workforce are now millennials. And what they've taught us time and time again <laughs> is that they want to see that sort of core value representation and they want to be a part of it. And we're excited to offer them those kinds of opportunities. So you're seeing a lot of change. Indeed. <laughs> Asai Pompey, thank you so much for your time. And thanks for having me.